Welcome back, Alcinista. Hello, juniors. Congratulations, you are getting nearer on your goal. In this video, we are going to tackle equilibrium and supports reactions. Part 1. You may be familiar with this topic for this discussed in your statics of rigid bodies. By the way, for those who have not yet watched the definition of structural theory discussed by Engineer Pedrosa, feel free to click the link in the description box below before proceeding to this presentation. Let us start by asking ourselves, what is equilibrium? Imagine a seesaw. Focus on the blank alone. The twin Anna and Anton want to ride the seesaw together on the same side but wanted the plank to be parallel with the horizon. What will happen if they ride on the same side? Indeed, it will look like this. Then, their friend Alex came and wanted to ride the seesaw. Alex is half the weight of the twins combined. The three happily rode the seesaw. But what do you think will happen? Again, they can't balance the plank. Later, the shy Mike went to the group and asked if he can join them. Mike weighs the same as Alex. They all rode the seesaw. What do you think will happen? Yes, they managed to balance the seesaw. Equilibrium is a state of being balanced or equal. A structure is said to be in equilibrium if the resultant of all the forces subjected to it equates to zero. Now, looking at the bigger picture, can we say that the seesaw with the four children in it is in equilibrium? Well, let us answer that question after this discussion. Now that you have already known equilibrium, let us then define support reaction. But first, what is a support? Let us go back to the seesaw that we had earlier. Of course, our seesaw is consists of a plank that carries the load of person or persons sitting on it and the mechanism attached on the center. Let us consider a seesaw without people sitting on it. If someone pulled the plank along its length, what will happen? Yes, the plank will not move and remain at rest. Therefore, we can say that the mechanism attached to the plank is the support. So what is a support reaction? Remember the person pulling the seesaw plank? If the mechanism attached in the center prevented the plank from separating, then we can conclude that it reacts on the pulling force. If the mechanism is the support, then the force that it exerted is the support reaction. Support reaction are usually assumed to be opposite in direction of the subjected load as we draw it in the free body diagram. Let us now proceed to the types of supports. There are three common types of supports, ruler, pinned, and fixed. These supports join the structure to its foundation. Simple support is another type of support. It is not often found in the building structure and is commonly idealized as frictionless surface. These types of supports could be found at the ends, at midpoints, or at any other intermediate points. It is important to identify the support for it concludes the type of the load the structure should carry. Let us first know what is a ruler support. Ruler supports are free to rotate in any axis and translate along the surface on which it rests. The surface can be horizontal, vertical, or sloped at certain angle. What does this mean? Say we have the structures as shown. 
if we exert an outside horizontal force, what will happen to the structure? Certainly, it will roll towards the direction exerted by the force. This is translation, or the horizontal movement. How about if we exert vertical force? The structure will remain at rest. And the ruler support resists the applied vertical force. This resisting force is the resulting reaction force, which is always a single force that is perpendicular to and away from the surface. It is usually denoted by capital letter R. Ruler supports are commonly placed at one end of long bridges. This permits the bridge structure to adjust with temperature change. It is important to have roller support on one side of the banks because expansion forces may damage the bridge structure if it is locked in place. This serves as a buffer for the expansion forces. Again, a ruler support cannot provide resistance to lateral forces. Why? Imagine a person wearing roller skates. The person should remain steady exerting the most possible perfect vertical load on the roller skates for it to be at rest. As soon as the wind blows hard laterally or if someone pushes the person or maybe that person itself bent and made a lateral load, the roller skates will roll away in response to the force that triggered its movement. Since most structures are subjected to lateral loads, it follows that a building must have other types of support in addition to roller support. Let us now define pinned supports. A pinned or hinged support is much reliable when it comes to resisting forces compared to roller support. As roller support can resist on the vertical forces, pinned support on the other hand and resist both vertical and horizontal forces. The same with roller support, it also cannot resist a moment. What does this mean? Say we have structures with pinned or hinged supports. If these structures is subjected to inclined force, what will happen? We usually break the inclined forces into components. Thus, our pin or hinge both have vertical and horizontal reactions. It is commonly practiced to be denoted as Ry and Rx for vertical and horizontal reactions respectively. The pin supports tend the structural member to rotate, but not to translate in any direction. A single pin connection is usually not sufficient to make a structure stable. Another support must be provided at same point to prevent rotation of the structure. Pin support can also be found as support for bridges. We can also apply it in our daily life. The best example for this is a door. As you push the door open, it tends to rotate at distinct axis. Yet, if you try, to exert force vertically and horizontally, it is not affected. In other words, the door hinges prevent vertical and horizontal translation. However, a certain amount of moment is needed to create a rotation of the door. If it is not enough, the door will stay at rest. This is how fixed support reacts when subjected by a force. Among the three supports, fixed support is indeed the most reliable when it comes to resisting loads. Fixed supports can resist vertical and horizontal forces as well as a moment. It could be said that they can restrain both rotation and translation. Thus, they are also known as rigid supports. We can therefore conclude that with just fixed support, the structure is stable since all three equations can be satisfied. In the presentation of fixed support, it always includes horizontal and vertical forces and a moment. We could also see fixed support in our daily life. A good example of this type of support is a flagpole. 
set into a concrete base. In a structure with concrete foundation can also be an example of fixed support. Simple supports Simple support is basically a support where a certain structure rests on a frictionless surface. It can be represented similarly as the ruler support where it only resists the vertical force right above where the structure rests. This support is often dependent on the gravity and friction to develop a minimal amount of frictionless resistance to moderate lateral loading. Temporary wooden bridge is the common example of simple support. To discuss further, imagine if you place a plank of hardwood above two concrete blocks. The plank is expected to remain at rest if there is no lateral load applied. It can hold vertical loads. However, if you push it sideways, it will slide off the concrete blocks. The plank will move because a simple connection cannot develop any resistance to the lateral load. A simple support can be found as a type of support for long bridges or roof span. Though simple supports are not usually used in building structures, they are often found in places with frequent seismic activity. So those were the types of supports we have. I hope you learned a lot in this discussion. God bless.